So Ken, just wanted to talk to you about the uh, percutaneous posterior cervical screws and instrumentation um, here from the Stedman Clinic in Vail, Colorado. These are my disclosures. So again, you know, this is obviously a tech forward conference. And so we would maybe uh, have widespread enthusiasm uh, for this. Uh, but on the posterior cervical instrumentation, I think we're sort of in the encouraging reports and uh, right before everyone says, wow, this is a great idea. We should just jump in and do it. And one of the benefits of the robotic system I use is we can really move it anywhere in the room uh, to get ideal trajectories especially with the cervical spine, obviously it, it's a little more flexible. I would make it more akin uh, towards a pediatric uh, situation as opposed to a adult degen uh, in the lumbar spine, uh, but just being mindful of the flexibility of the cervical spine itself. So this isn't really a new concept. Uh, it, definitely in the last uh, three to four years, we started doing more and more. Um, this is some cervical spine navigation with uh, robotics that we're kind of moving towards. Yes. And, you know, a lot of stuff I do is endoscopic as well as robotic. And I think when we move towards percutaneous robotic posterior cervical instrumentation, that really uh, starts opening up that endoscopic posterior uh, cervical foraminotomy in conjunction. So then we're really doing the decompression, we're doing the instrumentation, and we're also doing the fusion part uh, truly uh, as minimally invasive as we can. I'm a, I'm a tapper. And yeah. so my indications typically are greater than four levels, um, ACDFs that cross a, a cervical thoracic junction, and obviously non-union. And I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot more uh, literature that's being put forward about even three-level ACDFs uh, recently by Dr. Nunley uh, pushing kind of the uh, Providence surgical uh, instrumentation to back some of that stuff up. So we're not as good as we think we are uh, at three year level for uh, ACDFs, making sure they heal. And here, you know, revision rates as high as 35%. So is there something we can do at a single setting uh, to prevent that higher revision rate? And so this was a recent paper that I'm sure has been promoted and come out. Uh, I don't use uh, the Providence uh, devices, uh, but the point of this paper was, hey, you know, uh, if we do a circumferential fusion uh, on a three-level ACDF, we're going to have a significantly improved fusion rate and a, a decrease in that revision rate. And as this is robotics, and I love the whole concept of robotics, uh, being able to percutaneously back up uh, patients uh, in a minimally invasive way to decrease their non-union rate, uh, to me, is uh, very advantageous. So some of the advantages of the percutaneous approach, obviously, we're trying to spare as much muscle as we can. We're trying to reduce blood loss. We're trying to shorten length of stay. Um, and we're trying to increase the union rate. And in my experience, and I don't, I'd, I'd love comments from everybody, um, when you're doing, you know, a multi-level construct and you really start to cross that cervical thoracic junction, you know, uh, I, I just feel when you're going from a more mobile portion of the spine to a more rigid portion, just like in the lumbar going from L5 uh, to S1 to the pelvis, uh, do we need a little bit more robust fixation to ensure that we really get uh, good healing across the cervical thoracic junction? Just feel the pedal down. But really, patient positioning is going to be key. Um, I use a Mayfield head holder. Um, the system that is about to come out uh, for percutaneous posterior cervical uh, robotic instrumentation uh, should have a DRB that's actually in the Mayfield head holder, uh, which uh, does uh, allows you to not have to make that um, incision uh, in the upper uh, thoracic spine to place your DRB. Really getting good camera positions. I generally put it at the foot of the bed. Um, and you can see here, uh, the robotic arm comes in uh, from the side. And typically I want all the instruments kind of pointing at kind of a 20 to 30 degree towards the ceiling. And again, uh, you can watch the video I did last year. Uh, really it's a finesse technique. And uh, just like uh, we heard in the pediatric space, 
especially at the um, upper thoracic levels, you have to really worry about those sort of steep angles uh, as um, the ribs uh, start to instrument or get close to uh, and articulate with the transverse processes. So skiving is always a risk here. Um, a lot of times I have a preoperative CT on these patients because a significant number of the cases that I do for this are non-union. Um, and so I can sort of pre-plan and know what type of screws I can get. And the reason why I called this talk uh, posterior cervical instrumentation is because one of the beauties of the robot is you can do pedicle screws uh, if the anatomy allows you, but you can also do lateral mass, spinal laminar, really if you can uh, put a screw um, in uh, safely into the bone with the depth and uh, diameter you need, uh, you can place it. And the advantage of this is you don't, uh, you no longer have to uh, make sure you're doing the traditional up and out technique um, for putting in lateral mass. You can do a more uh, straight technique, uh, especially to line them up if you're doing uh, sort of multiple levels um, posteriorly. So uh, just like last year, I typically uh, bring the robot in and I draw little circles uh, where I'm going to plan uh, my technique. Uh, when I was doing uh, most of these cases, because we didn't have the instrumentation, uh, I would do essentially uh, modified wiltsies. Uh, you do have to be cognizant of the trapezius muscle coming through here. In the upper uh, thoracic area, you have to worry about the rhomboids. So it's actually very interesting to see, because we're typically not far lateral, when we're doing that midline dissection, we're typically peeling the muscle off and kind of pulling it apart. But in the percutaneous uh, situation, we're actually dividing some of the trap and we just have to be cognizant uh, of those muscles so we're not actually transecting um, part of the, uh, the trapeze. Again, I drill, I tap, I uh, put in the screw. Um, I do put these in on hand. Uh, I don't put cervical screws in on power. Uh, just because I do like that tactile feedback. And I don't want the weight of the drill to start pushing the spine. I want to be able to actually uh, put as little downforce as possible and almost let the screw uh, pull itself into the channels uh, that we have cut. Um, again, uh, I don't necessarily do um, immediate post-op spins. I think that can be a good idea if you have any question. Um, but I'm at almost 400 uh, robotic cases at this point. Um, and the way we sort of have it, we have a pretty good trust in, in the posterior cervical space. We've, we're have we in double digits um, on that as well. So this is just that 3D model uh, crossing the cervical thoracic junction, just perking that at seven and one. So these are the tools I use. This is sort of a, a bottom to top view. You do have a pretty steep angle. What's nice uh, about the way we have that set up is really if the angle of the screw changes to a point where your robotic arm doesn't necessarily get there, um, you can always unlock the robot, relock it in a better position. A lot of times uh, the robot's almost too close and you actually need it to move away to get certain trajectories. Obviously, you have to be mindful of the elbow uh, hitting the head and causing any sort of uh, deflection there. Um, but uh, in, in general, um, that post uh, in the upper thoracic spine really helps. Bring it down. So nice. So the, these are just uh, more articles. It seems to be a, a growing uh, trend that people are looking at this. So uh, it's very appropriate for. Uh, being right on the sort of front yeah. edge of this. These papers, if you look, are basically 2022s, uh, some 21s, some 23s and 24s. Uh, and so really this is an emerging technique in uh, utilizing robotics to now uh, basically navigate the entire spine, not just the thoracolumbar space, but also uh, in the cervical spine as well. This was last year. Um, at this very conference when I uh, demonstrated it. That's a QR code that actually links out uh, to that talk. 
uh, if you'd like to watch uh, some more live how to do it. Uh, I go through uh, placing multiple screws percutaneously. Um, and that was here at this very conference. So I just kind of wanted to go through some of the cases that I'm using this for and sort of the how and why. Uh, this patient, pseudoarthrosis, adjacent segment breakdown. Um, and so again, people, I've had some questions, why didn't you instrument it all the way up? And one of the reasons uh, why is I really wanted to um, do an ACDF, basically a two-level ACDF and fix the non-union, but I also wanted to spare as much posterior uh, soft tissue as possible as like this patient right now uh, had a, a bad pseudo, already had a previous uh, multi-level fusion, and now we're extending it. And I just didn't want to continue uh, that uh, instrumentation further up uh, and let it heal. This patient's over a year out now and everything healed. There were no issues uh, with that two-level ACDF above that construct and the pseudoarthrosis also healed as well. These were all uh, pedicle screws uh, that were placed and you can see that by the trajectory uh, of the screw. Um, but again, this patient over a year out, happy as a clam, um, had, a, had a shirt on in clinic that said, make my neck great again. So that was, that was a little comical. So again, crossing the junction, um, I find that this is a very excellent technique to really, uh, especially in some of these athletes uh, that were football players, uh, they have really, really thick necks, they're gonna put a lot of torque on these inner bodies. And I uh, want to back up that cervical thoracic junction uh, in a minimally invasive way. Another pseudoarthrosis, and you can see here, these uh, were done more in sort of a straight in or lateral mass technique. Um, that was the bone that was available. Um, this person had a little bit uh, less real estate uh, to put in true pedicle screws. So again, posterior cervical instrumentation uh, got that non-union to heal uh, without any issues. Four-level ACDF crossing the junction. Again, tried to convert this four-level ACDF to essentially a two-level ACDF uh, based on putting in the posterior screws in the back. Uh, again, this patient healed, uh, no issues. Uh, and basically, you're converting uh, the non-union rate from a four-level uh, ACDF essentially to a two, uh, which is in the 90%. So we're really increasing the probability uh, that this that these patients with multi-level anterior surgery uh, have uh, good uh, solid fusion the first time. So this one, multi-level pseudoarthrosis, uh, you can see on the left, you can basically see air in almost every single level. Um, again, I used a kind of more straight in uh, technique uh, to place those screws percutaneously. And that really allowed um, Good instrumentation, solid uh, fusion, uh, no complications here. Again, another pseudoarthrosis. You can see, unfortunately, I get a lot of pseudo sent my way. Um, again, perk uh, techniques. This was sort of a modified pedicle screw. I didn't have enough room. Her, her vertebral artery was right next to uh, the channel for the pedicle, so I didn't have enough room. But I was still able to get, you know, 14 millimeter. Uh, screws in a pedicle trajectory uh, in. Again, healed great. Another pseudoarthrosis. This was the first time I've ever seen a plate broken in multiple locations with screws broken. Uh, again, did a modified uh, pedicle perk here. And again, full fusion, no issues. And another one crossing the junction. And that's what we got. So uh, really, this is a, a, a great technique backing up pseudos, fixing those uh, larger multi-level constructs. Uh, if you want to ever see uh, stuff that I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram and that's my QR code. And that is about it. Thank you very much for allowing me uh, to talk.